Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink using one of my very much loved all-time favorite stamp sets. If you're new here, hi, I'm Amy R and I'm obsessed with the beautiful flower stamp set that was released several years ago. I've done many videos using this set. I will have a link to an entire playlist at the end of this video. So I wanted to do some watercoloring with the new Distress Mica Stains, the Halloween sets that were released recently that I've already used in a few videos. And I wanted to use this stamp set. Any excuse to pull this out, I'm gonna do it. So I have some Canson XL watercolor paper. I put it in my Misty. I lined up the stamp. I used my anti static powder tool and then I'm inking up the stamp with Versafine Claire Fallen Leaves ink. So this is a really dark brown ink. It's just a subtle difference from the Nocturne I use, like the black Versafine Claire ink. Um, I was in like, you know, this fall sort of color scheme mood and doing like stamping images in brown instead of black, it, it does make a difference, even though it's subtle. You don't need to heat emboss it. I just like heat embossing when I'm doing watercoloring because it's just more convenient. <laughs> That's literally the only reason. The raised edges keep things a little more contained. I don't have to worry so much. I don't have to be um, more careful about things bleeding into each other, you know? So I coated it with clear embossing powder, melted it with my heat tool. Plus it does give, again, it depends on my mood, but it does give that nice raised shiny finish to the image but you can always leave it off. So Distress Mica Stains, because these have mica in them and they are a spray, any sort of product like this, you need to agitate it. So you need to shake it up really, really, really well before you use it, while you're using it, etc. So the colors I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the Fortune Teller, Burning Ember, uh, Wicked Elixir and uh, Decayed. And all of these, I shake them up really well first, then I take the nozzle off and I'm just applying them to a palette. Now again, because these have um, a, an additive in them, like the, in this case, the mica, they will immediately settle on my palette. Like you saw it there when I put the fortune teller on there, it looked all beautiful and shimmery there for a second. Actually, no, that first one was a uh, burning ember. Um, and then it immediately went dark. It's because the shimmer literally just immediately settles to the palette, which is fine. But when you're coloring with it, whether it's like a watercolor like this or just anything, you need to swirl your brush in there and pick up more of that shimmer. And this is the same thing with like the oxide sprays. I've done videos watercoloring with those. Same thing because the oxides have the pigments. The pigments immediately settle. So you just swirl it up. So also with these, um, the shimmer is going to be, if you're going to watercolor with them, the shimmer is going to be much more subtle because you're adding more water to this. If you go in with more solid color, you will see more of the shimmer, but I didn't want to do that because these are very intense colors. Like all, any of the distress, like spray stains, oxide sprays, etc. These mica stains are no exception. They are very heavily um, uh, colored. You know, there's, there's a lot of colorant in them, which makes them perfect for sprays. But when watercoloring, unless you want a really super intense um, image, yeah, just these are all my little random thoughts. Um, so that's all I was doing. I was just getting the areas wet with water and then picking up, like swirling my brush. And of course, my palette's kind of off screen, but it's it's not rocket science. I was just swirling my brush in my little my little puddles of those sprays and then painting with them. Really, really easy. And it's just fun. And these col these colors love them especially like fall halloween anything i purposely did this i was going to do a ha another halloween card with this stamp set because i love it but i thought i would keep this more just fall themed you know and these colors are fabulous like that burning ember color is such a deep beautiful orange and then this fortune teller is oh, chef's kiss i love them all so anyway i painted the, the one floral or and the the you know the bud with the burning ember and then I used the fortune teller for the other two flowers. And then for the flower centers, I kind of mixed. In the end, I ended up like mixing everything together. But I used some of the 
decayed. And then I also use decayed on uh, some of these leaves and whatnot. And then I'm going to use the Wicked Elixir. I love the names too. One of you mentioned that in um, one in the comments on one of the other videos I did recently because I posted a lot of videos lately. Uh, that the names are great. That is something that Tim Holtz is just brilliant at. Look at all the names of all the different colors in the distress line. You know, he's he's very good at coming up with very descriptive and creative ways to name things, which I very much appreciate because that's something I just suck at. You should see some of my save files for things. It's like picture one, picture two, <laughs> file one. <laughs> that's not where my creativity lies. Anywho, anywho, I painted all the things. It was really quick and just simple and subtle. Like there's shimmer from those stains, but not a lot. And then I couldn't resist using the foundry wax again. Also because I wanted to splatter with it. People keep mentioning, because you guys know, me and my splatter. I love my splatter. I, I was aware that you can splatter with foundry wax personally. I'll get to that in a second. First off, foundry wax is its own... Um, it is in its own niche. If you are not familiar with foundry wax, I will have a link in the description box below to Tim Holt's video specifically on foundry wax because there's there's just a lot. This product is very interesting. Um, you don't need much of it. You also don't want to work with too much of it at a time. You can literally see it there on my palette. It As it's exposed to air, it starts to dry out and it literally turns to dust. It is just, it is the weirdest product. So I applied it with my finger around the edges. You shake it up really, really well. I just use my fingers to apply it around the edges. And then I put more on my little palette. And I'm using uh, Tim Holtz like splatter brush. Because that is what's kind of recommended to splatter with this. And again, I'm honestly, for me personally, I don't think this is something I'll reach for for splatter. I like it for all the other effects. Like going around the edge like this. I really like that because I purposely wanted like more blobby areas. Um, but for actual splatter, if I want gold splatter, I'm going to use my Gonzai Tombi Starry Nights palette. That is my like holy grail of metallic splatter. But I like the foundry wax for other things. It is amazing for adding, like I've, you know, been rubbing it on top of um, the raised areas of embossing folders. I like it for edging like this. Because, yeah, I was able to get more like blobby bits and so it would show up more. And then the number one thing with foundry wax, you have to heat it. Like have to. If you don't, it will do what it did in the palette. It will just like dust away. It is, it is honestly the weirdest product. I've been having fun playing with it. So I heated it, including the, the little bit of splatter I did and heated it with my heat tool. You, you, it goes metallic immediately and then it's set. To clean it up, you just need uh, isopropyl alcohol. I have a little, little baby mason jar that I showed there. That was another tip I picked up from Tim's video. And I just swirled the splatter brush in that mason jar that's got a bit of alcohol in it. Cleans it right off, wipes off my palette. We're good to go. So my inside of the card it's Nina Desert Storm cardstock is my card base. And this is going to be a mini slimline card. So the card base is going to be six and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches. And I put the card base inside my Misty. And I used my post-it tape to mask off the score line. And then I inked up that stamp with Simon's Fawn ink. Just a really nice light, kind of warm gray color. It's perfect on Desert Storm. Love. I was going to stamp sentiments on the inside of the card, but decided not to. I just, I love this stamp so much. <laughs> I was like, no, it's beautiful. Just, we're just going to leave it. You know, we're just going to leave it. But I am going to add a sentiment to the outside of the card. So I use, of course, my bold thanks sentiment wafer die from Simon. I just, I can't not use it. It's perfect for everything. So I die cut scraps. Um of the Nina Desert Storm cardstock with that wafer die. And then I also die cut some matte gold cardstock and then I stack those together with craft tacky glue. So I've got a bit of dimension to it. Once those are all stacked together, I can adhere this to that um, watercolored panel. Same thing, just use a bit of craft tacky glue to adhere that. And I did, I was like, oh, I could, you know, stamp companion sentiments, you know, add all the things because with me more is more, but this is me reining it in. <laughs> again, this is me aiming for more clean and simple. Yeah. Again, if you watch my videos, you guys know. So 
I'd hear that sentiment. And then I coated the back of this with Simon's Big Mama foam tape, which is thinner than your basic foam tape. So it gives it a bit of dimension, but not a bunch of bulk. And then I'm going to adhere this to my card base. And shockingly, I know I'm done. I thought I could have added any everything, everything but the kitchen sink. I have bling for days, lifetimes, all of it. But I just, I really wanted the colors and the florals and the gold metallic to stand out. So I'm using the flash on my phone. You can kind of see the shimmer. It's hard to show on camera, but it's there. It is subtle, but you can really see it on the purple. And in real life, you can see it a lot more. It's just, I love these mica sprays. They're so fun. So I also paired this card with one of Simon's uh, mini slimline envelopes. This is like the, I think it's called grocery bag. I forget. I'll have a link to it. Just like everything else. Like I'd said earlier, I will have a link to my playlist using the stamp set. I will have links to all the supplies used in the description box below the video, as well as a link to my blog post, etc. All that info is below if you want to check it out. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I very much appreciate it. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.